So thank you again for, for joining us today um, in this uh, webinar, well, this series of uh, research skills webinar that we are carrying out uh, at PEP. Uh, today, um, Kibram Abe is gonna present. Uh, Kibram is a research fellow in the Development Strategy and Governance Division of the International Food Policy Research Institute. He is a development and agricultural economist with uh, research interests covering rural development, agricultural transformation, urbanization, food and nutrition security, and also behavioral economics. Um, so most of his research involves impact evaluation methods. And today he's gonna present um, uh, this uh, interesting seminar he already presented among uh, the PEP research fellows. That's its uh, understanding measurement of agricultural data in improving statistical inferences in Africa. So please keep on go ahead. Um, he will present for about 30 minutes um, and then we'll have some time for questions, um, comments. You can use both the chat box or the Q and A. Um, it's better if all of you use the q and A. It's easier for us, but of course, if uh, any question goes into the chat box, it's okay. We're gonna read it anyway. So go ahead, Kibram. Um, again, thank you everybody for joining. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Carmen. Um, yeah, okay. So my name is uh, Kibram Abai. Uh, I'm a research fellow at e so today I'm going to talk about uh, understanding measurement of agricultural data for improving statistical inference in Africa. So this is a, a more of a synthesis of uh, our work in the last uh, two, three years. Um, so the motivation for this, uh, for this uh, presentation and uh, research is obvious, uh, somehow uh, obvious uh, because um, we know that measurement uh, drives analysis and um, the quality of descriptive and uh, predictive evidence is only as good as uh, the underlying measures. Despite this, uh, we know that most of micro research in Africa uh, relies on self-reported uh, survey data. And this data are now uh, becoming, uh, or it's now becoming clear that this data are prone to measurement error of different forms. Some of these errors may be uh, what we call classical or, or uh, random errors, uh, which uh, we know uh, have some um, less consequential implications. Uh, some of them could all could be uh, non-classical or what we call them systematic. Uh, 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 you can think of systematic under-reporting or over-reporting. Um, and some of these errors are also likely to be driven by misreporting, while some of them may be uh, driven by misperception. I'll talk about the distinction between this uh, terminology. Uh, some of these errors are also uh, can also be correlated across variables of interest. Um, um, so uh, in this presentation, I would like to uh, address two broader questions, um, which uh, somehow include uh, other, other questions within, within uh, the broad question. So the first broad question is, uh, what do we do if we have multiple variables suffering from measurement error? Uh, uh, this, this is more spe specifically, uh, what are the consequences for statistical inference uh, if we have uh, uh, multiple variables suffering from measurement error and some of these errors can be correlated across, across variables? Uh, more specifically, um, that the correction of one but not all variables reduce the bias uh, and improve inference. That's uh, this, this is the question. Uh, uh, we are asking this question because uh, much of the previous literature focused on univariate measurement problem, uh, while uh, or despite the fact that uh, we could have uh, um, two sided or multiple uh, mismeasurement problems in, in our analysis. The second broad question uh, that uh, I would like to uh, somehow address in this presentation is, uh, uh, what do we do if we have a uh, 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 misperception instead of misreporting? I'll talk about the distinction between the two, but the, between the misperception and misreporting in a while, but uh, uh, much of the previous literature assumes that what we see a uh, uh, survey error in, in survey data is mainly misreporting while it, it might be a, a misperception. And I, I, I'll try to address some of these uh, distinctions in, 
uh, in my presentation. And this, these slides are mainly based on uh, our recent work with my coaches. Uh, uh, and some of these papers have been published in the Journal of Development Economics and the American Journal of Agricultural Economics and, and other journals. So it's more of a synthesis of uh, these papers rather than rather than uh, a standalone paper. So let's first address the first problem. Uh, that's what we call correlated measurement error in agricultural data. And I'm going to talk about uh, the implication uh, uh, on uh, an interesting relationship uh, that has been a source of debate for, for the last few decades. That's what we call the size productivity relationship in agriculture. And this is uh, 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 this is a joint work with my uh, co-authors uh, from IFPRI as well as Cornell. Uh, so the motivation for this uh, uh, paper was uh, mainly uh, the fact that we see a widespread uh, prevalence of non-classical measurement error in several variables of interest. And, uh, uh, and uh, not all of these measures or uh, uh, not all these mismeasurements cannot, can, can be uh, addressed by, by statistical uh, uh, correction or by uh, uh, improved measurement. So um, what we ask in this question is, uh, well, despite the, the, the fact that um, the conventional recommendation is to employ better measurement methods, it is important to understand uh, what happens if we are not able to address all the mismeasurement or all the measurement error that we might have in our analysis. And what happens if these errors can be correlated for several reasons? I mean, uh, these errors can be correlated, for instance, if uh, people are systematically in under or over reporting uh, of multiple variables. Imagine uh, if someone is over reporting his income and his, his, uh, his labor supply, then uh, the errors uh, would be correlated. Or you can think of also if someone is rounding uh, multiple variables of interest to the next digit. I mean, if you're rounding your age and you're also rounding your your uh, your uh, income, then uh, this creates simple uh, correlation in measurement errors. Or you can also think of uh, what we call optimal prediction error, uh, where respondents employ a mismeasured variable for uh, predicting another variable of interest. So what do we do in this? In one of these papers, is uh, we uh, we study non-classical measurement error in a broader sense. Uh, uh, in, in multiple variables, where we allow both uh, measurement error in both the dependent and independent variables, and we also allow these uh, errors to be correlated. And then we analytically and numerically illustrate their implications. Um, and empirically, we, uh, in, we uh, apply this to uh, an interesting relationship. Uh, that's what we call the size productivity relationship in agriculture, where there has been a lot of debate on uh, on the existence of the inverse size productivity relationship. That means uh, uh, for the last few decades, several studies have found that uh, smaller crops are more productive. And this has been a sort of a contentious debate among, among uh, researchers. And, um, and some studies have uh, uh, tried to explain this uh, uh, through a market imperfection or uh, other, other uh, source of uh, bias, including omitted bias bias. However, uh, recent studies cast uh, some doubt on, on this, and they attribute that uh, measurement error in production and land area may be uh, contributing to this uh, uh, relationship. And that's exactly where we want to contribute uh, empirically. So I'll, I'll, I'll not spend a lot of time on the analytical framework. I'll just uh, briefly uh, uh, skip over it and then go to the main uh, implications. But you can consider uh, what we're considering is a simple relationship between yield and uh, plot size. So uh, you can see here, uh, this is log of y, and this is log of x, and then we have uh, log of x on this. It's a simple log-log uh, uh, relationship between yield and, uh, and plot size. Here, uh, what we have, we don't observe the true values of y and x, rather we observe um, a, a mismeasured values. And then uh, to analytically uh, show the implication of this, uh, this mismeasurement, uh, we we uh, impose some uh, standard assumptions. Uh, we, uh, for instance, impose that uh, measurement error inserts additively. And then we also uh, impose some structure in, in, in uh, the nature of measurement error. So the first one, uh, for instance, here, we're saying uh, 
measurement error is non-classical uh, and it enters uh, for its correlates with a true value as well as with, with, with the true value of y and then measurement error in x is also correlated with the true value of x and these uh, measures are correlated uh, among each other. So um, those, those of you interested in uh, the, the analytical and numerical exercise can go through the paper, but I'll just uh, provide a summary of uh, the analytical findings here. So the first one is, uh, I would like to mention two points here uh, from this table. The first one is um, measurement error in production uh, can overestimate or underestimate the inverse side productivity relationship. So what we uh, show is even in the absence of any relationship between side and productivity, a measurement error in production can create both negative and uh, uh, positive correlation uh, between the two uh, metrics. This is the first one. The second one is um, uh, you would see that you can see that uh, uh, when we have measurement error in both variables of interest, uh, uh, you can see that uh, in some cases, and I think uh, this is not obvious in this web, but in, in, in some cases, it might be all better to uh, ignore the mismeasurement in both variables of interest rather than correcting uh, just one of the metrics. You can compare this one uh, with, with the last one. And if we have, uh, uh, for instance, a positive correlation between measurement errors, ignoring both measure mismeasurement could be better off compared to uh, just correcting one of them because of simply the correlation between the measures. Uh, this is what we call a second best approach in the sense, if you're not sure about uh, uh, the, the nature of measurement error, then uh, it might be better off even to ignore uh, uh, some of uh, the mismeasurements rather than uh, incomplete correction. Um, we show some of, uh, some of the, uh, the foundations for this and uh, the situations where it's better off to correct uh, uh, one variable of interest and, uh, uh, and compared to ignoring both variables of interest. Now let's get to uh, um, the empirical demonstration where we employ data from rural Ethiopia, uh, uh, from rural uh, wheat farmers, uh, and we have data from about uh, 36 villages from about 16 uh, districts or wards in the three regions in Ethiopia. Uh, uh, where we have a random sample of one wheat plot, uh, a, a plot or farmer in in uh, in the I think in the, in the season uh, in the Mahar season in 2013 and 14, and the innovation in this exercise is we collected both uh, objective measures of production, land, and land area. So we have both um, for land area we have both self-reported and uh, and the gold standard measure of land area. That's what we call compact and drop. And for production, we also have self-reported measure as well as uh, the gold standard measure of uh, production, uh, that's the crop curve. Here you can compare the two, uh, the difference between the two measures, um, mainly the, the difference between the compact and drop and the self-reported, uh, the self, this, uh, sorry, the, the, yeah, the compact, the compact and drop and the self-reported plot size. And uh, the main takeaway from this is, uh, if you see the, the this column and uh, the first column, and what we can see is, as we continue or as the plot size increases, um, measurement error declines. So that, that means that um, smaller plots are, are overestimated while uh, larger plots are underestimated. And this is what we call the mean reverting error in, in uh, consumption and other surveys. So, Farmers are more likely to over, overestimate their smaller plots and more likely to underestimate um, larger larger plots. Here you can also see the distribution of um, the distribution of uh, self-reported and uh, uh, objectively measured plot size. And what you can see clearly is the 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 values on the vertical axis are self-reported, and you can clearly see that uh, there is a lot of banching around some uh, uh, size. Uh, yeah, there is a lot of banching around some fixed values, and you can see that um, this is simply because of rounding. Um, that means uh, farmers are rounding uh, their plot size to the next uh, digit, and you can see that there is a lot of clustering around 0 0.5 hectare, 0 0.25 hectare, and 0 0.125 hectare. So this is this is uh, this is one one uh, uh, one. Um, 
case or one way to detect that uh, we have a mismeasured uh, blood science. Here we have uh, the, uh, the discrepancy between crop cut and uh, salt reported production. And what we see is, again, in this one, uh, the bias or the size of measurement error in, uh, in self reported production declines as we increase um, the, 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 the harvest. That means um, smaller harvests are overestimated by farmers and larger harvests are uh, relatively, uh, relatively uh, yeah, less prone to measurement error. So um, here uh, we have a more parametric approach where we uh, simply run uh, uh, some regressions of measurement error as a function of true value. And this is simply the way to show whether measurement error in production behaves classically or non classically. And what we can see is clearly measurement error in production is systematic. And, uh, uh, and that clearly means that uh, larger plots are, uh, sorry, larger harvests are underestimated and uh, smaller harvests are overestimated. Here, uh, we have a similar table uh, where we characterize measurement error in, uh, uh, in plot size. And what we clearly see is also uh, the uh, measurement error in plot size is negatively correlated with the true plot size. And that means uh, smaller plots are again overestimated and uh, larger plots are underestimated. And this is, we are not the first to show that, uh, but it's just uh, to document it. And the most interesting part is here, uh, where you can see that um, uh, here uh, we are characterizing measurement error in production as a function of measurement error in uh, plot size. And this is because we are interested in to explore if the measurement error in the two metrics are correlated. And uh, they are strongly and positively correlated. And this, this means that a farmer who is uh, under or over reporting land area would likely do so for production. So that means, uh, to me, this is uh, somehow intuitive. Uh, there might be uh, some specific tendencies uh, for farmers to overestimate all, all metrics. Okay, now let's get to what are the implications on, on estimating the size productivity relationship or the relationship between uh, plot size and productivity. Here we start with uh, the benchmark case where we have both objective measures. And uh, you can see that um, when we have uh, objective measures of production and land area, we see that uh, uh, we don't see a statistically significant uh, relationship between yield and, and uh, plot size. Uh, that, that means yield is almost statistically invariant to area. This is based on the benchmark uh, uh, measures. Now let's let's correct let, let's add a uh, uh, measurement error in either variables uh, one at a time. So here uh, I'm going to correct only for measurement error in uh, land area, and I'm keeping measurement error in production to be there. And what we see is when we introduce measurement error in production, you can see huge uh, inverse relationship between uh, size and productivity. This is what we say, what, what, what we are arguing that uh, 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 the, the measurement error uh, in itself can, can generate inverse relationship, even in the absence of any relationship. Here, uh, what, here what I'm, I'm correcting measurement error in production and then keeping uh, measurement error in land area to be there. And what we see is, again, uh, there is a strong inverse relationship. Uh, and then this is uh, intuitive with, with uh, or, I mean, this is consistent with our analytical and numerical exercise. And then um, now let's ignore both mismeasurement. When we ignore both mismeasurement um, so that we are using self-reported plot side and self-reported area, you can see that there is still uh, an inverse relationship, but uh, it's not that strong, it's not that big compared to uh, when we had, uh, when we uh, only correct one of the measurement errors at a time. So um, this suggests that uh, um, this suggests that ignoring the measurement error in both uh, uh, might be in some case uh, even uh, uh, a second best uh, to to um, correcting to one of them. And I'm I'm mentioning this uh, not based on the empirical results, but based on our numerical and analytical exercise that I'm not presenting here. But both both are, are also consistent. What we also see that in in the empirical exercise. So to summarize, the, to summarize the empirical findings, what we see is uh, when, when there is no error, we don't see significant uh, 
inverse side productivity relationship. Uh, and when we introduce ERAD in production, we see a very large uh, and, uh, and strong uh, inverse side productivity relationship. And then uh, when we, intro again, uh, that also holds when we uh, introduce measurement ERAD in cross side. Uh, however, when we ignore both, uh, there is still an inverse relationship, but it's much weaker than uh, the one the one uh, we have uh, from from uh, uh, yeah from correcting one of them. So, what 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 is the takeaway from this exercise? Uh, the takeaway from this exercise is um, um, we show that the sign and magnitude are uh, yeah we yes we show that. Uh, uh, then classical measurement error in either variable of interest can, can generate the inverse uh, side productivity relationship, even in the absence of any relationship. And, and this is uh, uh, one of the interesting findings that we want to highlight. And secondly, um, uh, we show that accounting for measurement error in one of the variables uh, could even worsen the bias and mislead uh, policy. And in that case, uh, correction of just one variable of, or man, one measurement error may be inferior to a second best approach uh, uh, based on multiple values, mismeasured values. And again, I would like to highlight that we are not again as correcting uh, for measurement error, but we want to highlight and caution that um, uh, inc incomplete uh, correction of measurement uh, error or mismeasurement is probably not, not, uh, uh, not uh, or, or uh, deserves an attention or a caution. So that, that's all about uh, the first uh, question. Now let me proceed to the next question, the next broad question. Um, uh, and uh, the, the, the next broad question that I wanna address in this presentation is, what happens if uh, farmers have, or respondents have misperceptions rather than misreporting? And what I aim to highlight in this, uh, uh, in this uh, second phase of presentation is, the, the, the measurement error uh, mechanisms matter for infants and, um, that's exactly what we highlight in this paper. And this is like another paper uh, 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 with my co-authors, Leah Bevis and Chris Barrett um, uh, from Cornell. Um, okay, so let me, uh, let me uh, provide some distinction between uh, misreporting and misperception. Um, much of the measurement error literature assumes that uh, the survey error we see in uh, survey data is mainly misreporting and that means uh, for instance, in the context of farmers, farmers, it means that farmers know the true quality, the true side of their plot, but they are just uh, uh, they are just uh, uh, misreporting it. This this is a strong assumption. Uh, uh, it, it might be the case that in some cases, farm, farmers may not know the true nature or the true side of their plot, and uh, they might have misperception around that and. They may be just uh, uh, they may be just uh, reporting that misperceived value. Let me give you another example. Uh, uh, um, for example, uh, parents may know and act in accord with the exact age of their child, but uh, uh, knowingly they misreport it or they round it when they tell you uh, the age of the child. So uh, the only problem in this is uh, uh, is they misreport it uh, and they are. Uh, uh, then the, there is the, the inference or the statistical inference that we build better on this data would be uh, would have some some problem or would would would, would be uh, biased. A second case is perhaps uh, uh, the parents may not know the true child the true age of the child, and that they might be just telling you what they think it is like. Uh, uh, and this this has a potential implication uh, not only for for the researcher, but also a uh, 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 potential inf implication for the par parents' decisions, mainly uh, uh, with potential implication and consequence for medication loading and growth monitoring. You can also think of other options. Uh, I mean, in the case of farmers, what we are thinking is farmers may not know the true uh, uh, quality or side of their inputs because um, they, they lack objective measures. And I think what, what example that we find is very intuitive is the case of crop variety identification. Where what we find is um, farmers don't have DNA fingerprinting tools or other tools to, to identify the variety of their crops. 
So what they are telling us is uh, simply uh, uh, what they perceive they, they are planting. And uh, that is slightly different from uh, what we call misreporting. Uh, um, I hope this is, uh, yeah, let me, let me, yeah, let me proceed to, to the next case. Um, so um, if respondents have, respondents have misperceptions, then it's not clear how we can address measurement error. Uh, uh, and uh, in the presence of misperception, uh, the appropriate regression specification is even not, not that clear. And um, um, yeah, and let me proceed to the next uh, uh, slide. And then, so what do we do in this in this uh, uh, in this exercise and in this paper is we analytically study measurement error generated by uh, uh, respondents misreporting and mis misperception. And then we introduce an empirical specification that generates unbiased, unbiased estimates under uh, a broader uh, uh, condition. And then we also develop uh, an estimated, estimable parameter uh, that helps us to decompose measurement error between the two measures. And then we apply this to uh, a long-standing topic um, uh, that's agriculture and intensification in, in, um, in sub-Saharan Africa. Obviously, the, 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 the care of agriculture intensification uh, in, in the context of sub-Saharan Africa is an interesting agenda, and it has been a source of uh, debate for the last uh, one or two decades, um, because um, there have been arguments uh, in favor of uh, the prevalence of intensification, while some others, are, some, some others uh, argue that uh, we don't see significant intensification in, in the context of uh, sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, however, one finding or one one, one uh, um, challenge that we or one one constraint that we observe in this debate is uh, all these measures or these uh, inferences are based on self-reported data. And as I shown you in the previous table, this type of data uh, can can uh, uh, create or can somehow uh, bias uh, any relationship uh, between between area and input intensity. So a simple analytical exercise again. Uh, we are here. The relationship is not between yield and uh, plot size, but between input yield and uh, plot size. So um, the old border app hypothesis uh, implies that uh, there is a, a negative relationship between uh, uh, input intensity and land size or farm size, and that means um, when you estimate a, a function of this type, where we have here is input and then here is plot size, and both are in log. And then uh, when you run a uh, this other function of plus size, um, the border hypothesis suggests that uh, we should have a negative value of uh, beta. So, uh, that means that because of land scarcity and population growth or uh, other, uh, other pressures, uh, uh, farmers with smaller plots are expected to, um, to apply more inputs per unit of land. This is what the, the border hypothesis implies. And then, um, as I said, uh, X is going to be uh, or is likely to be mismeasured if we are using on reusing self-reported data. And uh, because of that, recent literature is using uh, a GPS-based measure of plot size. And uh, so uh, recent, recent researchers are estimating the second relationship rather than the first. And, uh, and uh, one can assume uh, some uh, standard uh, assumptions, mainly uh, what we call the additive, additively interred measurement error to somehow uh, uh, describe the relationship between self-reported area and, uh, and objective measures or, or, or uh, what we call the GPS measures. So we, we consider three cases uh, of measurement error or source of measurement error. The first one is what we call misreporting. And what we are assuming is, assume that farmers misreport plot size while acting on accurate private knowledge of the true plot size. So that we are assuming that farmers know the true value of the, the or the true side of their plot. But when they tell us they made a small mistake or they, they or the enumerator made some mistake in, in recording the true plot size. This is the first one. The second one is assumes, the second assumption is farmers misperceive the true plot size. They don't know the true plot size they have or the true side of their plot. And that would have an implication on how they allocate inputs to that side. And this is what we call uh, misperception. 
And a third case uh, is a case where uh, families can misperceive and misreport uh, fraud crimes. We are going to show that, uh, or uh, based on our findings, what we are going to show is, um, depending on on the nature of measurement error, um, the empirical specification uh, for testing the input hypothesis or the input intensification hypothesis or the border up hypothesis varies across across these scenarios. Um, now let's first say uh, uh, we have misreporting, and uh, we are assuming that farmers have perfect information about the plot side. And they are basing their input intensification based on the true plot side. And in that case, um, the true equation that we should estimate is equation one, uh, and that's using the objective measure. And instead, if we estimate equation uh, uh, one, sorry, if we, if we estimate uh, the equation using the self-reported measure, then we will have a bias parameter of interest uh, uh, and the direction of bias depends on some some parameters and some some uh, natures of the data. Now let's get the second case uh, where we have misperception, and we are assuming that farmers misperceive the the, the the plot size or their plot size, and they they make their in input intensification decision based on this mistaken beliefs, and they are exactly telling the enumerator what they believe. So this in this case. Using the objective measure is not a good idea because uh, because uh, farmers are using uh, the self-reported or they are using their misperceived values for making their input decision and uh, uh, using the objective measure in this case is uh, is not informative for for our purposes. And if we use the the, the objective measure and then uh, we are going to have a bias that, that we show in the paper uh, can, can lead to downward bias. And what happens when we have misperception and misreporting in the data? Um, and in that case, uh, what we show in, in this study is, uh, if we have both misperception and mis misreporting in our data, and we provide some structure to uh, analytically show the implication, in that case, uh, a nature uh, using the self-reported nor uh, the objective measures of plot size uh, would recover the true uh, the true uh, uh, parameter of interest in in, in uh, yeah the true uh, in input intensification parameter of interest. So we have here some simple uh, analytical uh, uh, excess or summary of analytical findings, and what we want to show is. In the case of misreporting, uh, one should use the objective measure. However, in the case of misperception, one should use the self-reported measure because that's what matters for uh, for farmers' decisions. And if we have a mixture of both, uh, one should use the, the empirical uh, specification that controls for the true value of uh, uh, x as well as the measurement error in the data. Here we have uh, data from the multi-country uh, 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 program, that's the LSMS program. And we have four countries uh, and uh, you can clearly see that th these graphs are simply showing the distribution of um, objective and self-reported uh, lot size. And you can clearly see that for some countries, uh, you see a lot of clustering and branching around uh, some common values. For instance, for Malawi, you can see that there is a lot of branching in, in uh, in uh, around 0.5 acre, one acre and 1.5 acre. And I, this is a simple way to detect that the self-reported measures are, uh, are prone to rounding error or they are at least uh, prone to uh, a measurement error. And you can see that in, in most of the case except in Ethiopia. Okay, um, I'm checking my time. Uh, how many minutes do I have, Carmen? Um, if you can start wrapping up, that would be uh, okay, yeah. perfect. Okay, uh, yeah. So here in this table, I'm going to show you a similar finding where um, as you increase the, the, the plot size, you see that uh, the size of measurement error declines. And this is uh, similar to what I what I shown before. Here is, all, uh, I think, one of the findings that I want to show here. Here, uh, we estimate input intensity or in input intensification uh, intensification uh, decisions are a function of the true plot size and, and the measurement error. And what you can see is 
once you control for the true plot size, uh, measurement error is not expected to be significant in defining uh, input use if, if uh, measurement error is driven by misreporting because it shouldn't affect a farmer's decision. But you can see that measurement error is possibly correlated with the input intensity. That means that uh, those farmers who are overestimating their plot side are they are applying more inputs per unit of area. And this is intuitive. If you are uh, overestimate uh, your plot side, then it's more likely that you think that uh, you, sh you should apply more inputs. And that, ha that, that applies for all countries and for all input combinations. Uh, uh, we're considering four countries and uh, three, four inputs, and we see that in all combinations. And then uh, uh, another parameter of interest that we have is theta, and that's the share of misperception uh, in, in our data. And what we show is clearly a significant uh, share of uh, the, the measurement error in our data comes from uh, mis 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 misperception. And this is uh, uh, one of the interesting findings that we show. And let me jump into, yeah. So to conclude, uh, what we find is survey measurement error uh, reflects not only misreporting, but also misperception. And uh, we quantify uh, the share of misperception, and uh, we also apply this uh, concept to, uh, the, to testing the border app in input intensification hypothesis. And what we find is we find strong evidence in support of the border app intensification hypothesis. However, part of this is driven by farmers acting on their mis misperceived or misperceptions uh, of the plot side. And that means uh, uh, this is partly uh, if not, not informed by better on accurate information. And this might not necessarily be in, uh, productivity enhancing, but uh, we, we haven't explored that yet. But we are, we are, it would be interesting to explore whether this is a productivity enhancing or not. So uh, what, what, what we are describing here uh, in this paper have or some of the concepts have a uh, uh, much broader implication uh, and application in other concepts and what we are telling is so long as we allow for human actors to hold mistaken beliefs it is uh, it is uh, uh, it's good to be careful about uh, which major measures to use and in the presence of mistaken beliefs then um, those of us interested in understanding behavioral decision making of farmers would have or would need to follow what farmers are reporting, uh, not only not only uh, the objective measures. So the immediate uh, uh, the immediate hypothesis that we are experimenting now in some of our uh, experiments in in sub-Saharan Africa is: can we correct farmers' misperception, and uh, can that improve input input application choice? And um, with that, uh, let me let me stop here and uh, uh, yeah, open open the floor for questions. Thank you very much, Kibron, for your presentation. So a few um, of the participants, any of the participants have any questions, uh, comments, you can use the Q&A box. Um, we are sorry that at this point we couldn't uh, offer uh, um, the, uh, a, a French version or the, the possibility of, of, of having a um, French uh, translation. But we will uh, take that uh, comment into account for future uh, presentations, uh, especially the ones that are regarding Africa. I think there might be a, a strong interest in, in having that uh, opportunity. So we are just beginning this, uh, this uh, seminar series. So any comments to, to help us uh, improve them are, are very much welcome. So, uh, Lucas, I think you have a question, but uh, we prefer if you use the chat box. Can you write down your question? It's not inconvenient. Are you not able to? Uh... Let them speak. I think I am, but you know, it's just a matter of order. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so Eva Maria Egger has a question. Uh, she's asking, thank you, very interesting. Picking up your idea about the idea to try to change farmers' misperceptions, given that you see a lot of bunching around full numbers, um, for example, one hectare, how realistic is that uh, a farmer can digest information that he, uh, her or his plot 
of 0 0.8 uh, hectares instead and how she, he would have to adjust inputs. Yeah, thanks. Um, shall I, uh, do you wanna, yeah, do you wanna collect more questions or shall I? Um, you can go, go ahead and start answering uh, Eva's uh, question. Yeah, thank you, Eva. And I think this is a valid question. And I think uh, we're exactly facing that in, in uh, some of our experiments. Um, so in Malawi, um, and I think this is a study that we are doing with uh, our LHMS colleagues. Um, in Malawi, uh, what we did was uh, we provide an information uh, and the type of information that uh, you mentioned. We provide the information about the side of the block. Uh, uh, and, um, what we see is uh, obviously there is some adjustment, but it's not a, a huge adjustment in the sense uh, farmers seem to be struggling to uh, to uh, digest. I think your example is 0 0.58 is probably fine. I think we have had a, a case where the plot side is 0 point, uh, like uh, two, five, six, seven acre or something. And in this case, um, um, we realized that uh, it is it is difficult to uh, um, to remember these numbers. Um, however, it could be also um, our approach, and we just told them. Uh, uh, and we have, I mean, there could be other ways of um, recording this and keeping this uh, in in the records. For instance, uh, if you provide this this information to farmers using uh, some recording, that might. Uh, uh, simplify um the, the process of recollecting what 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 was told that said um we we also think that farmers may not be um i mean all farmers may not even adjust even after you told them not necessarily because they forget it or because they 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 um they don't recollect it but uh partly because it might it might be uh, like there is a lot of learning uh, cost in that, and I think one of the explanations for this type of what um, what, what they call um, um, what they call uh, rational inattention, where um, uh, uh, what we see in our data is um, those farmers who have smaller plots they do not adjust sufficiently. On the other hand, those farmers who have larger plots they they do adjust and. What this suggests is that um, there is a learning cost and uh, those farmers who are less engaged or who have less, less stake in, in farming or in, in this case in agriculture may not, may not be uh, willing to invest a lot of cognitively or a lot of um, investment in, in recollecting this information. There's um, another question in the chat box. Mulualem um, Jacob uh, asks, do you think the error which creates the misperception will affect the national policy? Well, I think this is a, yeah, this is a, this is interesting. Um, uh, and I think, all, uh, um, we have, oh, I mean, first I, I would like to mention that we haven't uh, evaluated the impact of this misperception on some of uh, the key uh, metrics, uh, mainly uh, agriculture productivity and, and other indicators. However, um, we think that uh, at least theoretically, um, the type of misperception that we detect in our data can affect input allocation. And that can create some uh, some sort of misallocation in factors of production, and that might have implication on on uh, on agriculture productivity, and uh, which which uh, which is an aggregate indicator and uh, a very uh, critical metric in agriculture policy. So um, we are coming to that point, but uh, uh, the the evidence that we have so far is uh, only on proximate outcomes on input allocation and. Uh, uh, input use decisions uh, and yeah, but I think in the in the next few uh, years we'll be able to see potential impact and implications on 
and catch our yield. We have another question. Uh, Charcos Meaza asks, thank you very much for the excellent presentation. I am wrong to say your work only emphasized on the respondents as a source of measurement error. Any attempts you made to consider other sources? Um, yeah, thanks. Thanks, Jerry. Uh, this is a, yeah, the, that, that's, a, that's some of the comments that I also get when I, yeah, when I try to, yeah, sell this uh, more, more mostly as uh, as respondents. Uh, you know, um, I agree that uh, respondents are not um, the only source of error in survey data, uh, and I think even there are some recent studies showing that um, uh, um, enumerators also uh, contribute to this and. Um, uh, some of our uh, experiments in the survey uh, in in the field. Uh, would probably uh, tell much about this in terms of the, the share of um, error that's coming from uh, respondents and the share of error that's coming from uh, enumerators. But I very much agree uh, and um, think that um, enumerators are also contributing for this. Um, but I, 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 I would definitely need more more figures to tell uh, which one is. I, I believe uh, respondents would be. Uh, the respondents era would be dominating, but we don't have the numbers so far. But I, I think it's a very good point, and we are, we are, we are already thinking about that. Um, Any more comments, questions? I still have some minutes to finish the presentation. So go ahead if you have any extra questions. You cannot allow for those who want to talk. Yeah. Um, I could, yeah, I, can, I mean, I think you can also allow people to talk. I, who, was, who was raising hand? Lukas, is he around? I'm not sure if he's still around. No, he's not. Okay. I have to write to him and ask him what was the question he had. Yeah, he's not around him. <laughs> okay, so if there are no any extra questions, um, again, we thank uh, all the participants for joining us today. And we invite you to attend the next two uh, webinars uh, of this uh, fiscal year. It's, um, it's gonna be next week and the week after that. Um, so we encourage you to check the presentations and information on the PEP uh, website, uh, and uh, we hope to see you in the next uh, uh, events. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Carmen. Thank you, Kibran.